Hey, it's Denise. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to those of you who've watched before and welcome those of you who are here for the first time. This lady, who everyone's here to see, this is my Percy. Um, Percy is now seven months old. I've been sick. Uh, I got Percy to train as my service dog. She's a standard poodle. Um, she's growing like a weed, as they say. Um, love this girl. I'm going to try to... I, I, I'm shooting this on my computer, not my phone, so like I'm having to turn the whole computer monitor. Probably going to knock stuff off the table, but I want you to be able to see her. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm like Jabba the Hutt here. I had to be on steroids again for a while. Now I'm just a talking mouth in the corner. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you know, it, they can be a little strange. Anyway, I just wanted to show you how big Percy's getting. She is still dealing with um, I've mentioned before that she's had stomach problems that started when she was, I want to say, about four months old. But she wasn't home that long. She came home in eight weeks. She wasn't home that long before it became very clear she couldn't digest the dog food. Um, we switched, you know, we did the, the rice and chicken just to settle her stomach. They gave the prescription do dog foods from the vet. Uh, we tried different brands that the dog uh, that the vet suggested. You know, store bought dog foods, nothing. This poor puppy was having diarrhea all the time. Um, and of course, while they're growing, it's so vital that they're getting all their nutrition. I'm like, I, I want to just pull the blanket over my head because I feel I feel like I would be less distracting if you didn't even have to look at me. Um, of course, then I'm probably muffling my voice. Look at the beautiful dog. Anyway. So she's been eating a homemade diet that I, I actually came up with. I, you know, I did my own sort of, I, I, I was a nurse for 26 years. I was not a nutritionist, but I was a nurse. Um, I did have, I worked in mental health. I worked with patients with eating disorders. I worked with uh, primarily patients with psychiatric and or substance abuse and or developmental issues um, for most of my career. But I did do some uh, pediatric home care for, you know, kids who were seriously ill, but wanted, you know, their parents obviously wanted them at home instead of, uh, in, in the hospital. Um, so I kind of just drew upon, you know, like trying to bring all that knowledge together and where am I going to start? And it's like, first thing was when the vet didn't want to change what we were doing, it was like, well, let's wait another week. Finally, like, the nurse in me spoke up. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just like this, this, like, talking mouth in the corner of the screen, and it's so weird. But I really want you to see her, because trust me, she's far cuter. Um, I just gave her a new bully stick, as, you know, the curly ones are, they're her favorite. They're over $5 a piece, and, you know, when you're on a budget, yes, that's expensive. Um, but she won't eat this in one sitting, whereas I've noticed that the like the straight flat bully sticks, she can tear one apart in an hour. So there's there's definitely something different. Um, I've also noticed the ones that are like scent free, oil free, won't leave marks, like seems to be that they've taken out everything that the dog finds appealing. So I'd rather have that, th this is a cheap top comforter that I throw over like, you know, this was an inexpensive comforter that I got little matching cheapy, you know, accent pillows. Um, you know, like kind of one of those bed in a bag kits. And I just throw that over my bed so that the blankets I really care about are not getting a stinky bully stick smell. And honestly, they don't leave that much of a smell. It's not like it leaves a big grease spot or something, but I guess they just put that warning on the bag because if you have really expensive you know, carpeting or furniture that you're worried about. They don't want you complaining to them if it leaves a mark. I personally have never found a problem with it. Although the, the carpet in her room is uh, like dark and has a, a, a pattern to it and stuff. So unless it was a really obvious kind of a big mark, you, you probably wouldn't notice it. But again, even when she eats them on this, you know, like baby blue, powder blue uh, kind of color, you don't really notice anything other than that it's wet for a while from her saliva. So I, I try not to go for the ones that say that they have no scent or, you know, no odor because she, 
I notice she'll get tired of them really fast. So I, I think by, by descenting it for us, they're deflavoring it for the dog, unfortunately. And if I'm going to pay $5 per bully stick, I, I want her to enjoy them. Um, I, I don't recommend any particular brand. I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I don't, you know, get any discount on anything. Um, but I, I will say, please look for your, your dog treats. Make sure that, you know, if you're, if you're a new dog owner, um, maybe you don't know that rawhide is not good for dogs. There's so many rawhide treats out there that it would make you think that it's good for dogs. Rawhide's been around as a dog treat for, God, I'm 52, and the dogs I grew up with had rawhide treats. Back then, we didn't know what we know now. And basically, a lot of rawhide has already been processed as if it was going to be made into leather before it gets uh, shuffled off to be made into dog treats. So it, can have been, it may have been processed with formaldehyde or other chemicals that you do not want your puppy or but even, for that matter, your adult dog chewing on. Please, please, please do not buy rawhide for your dog. It also is a choking hazard as large pieces. See as she's get the end of this, like she's really working on the end of it, she's pulling off like the tiniest little fibers will, will pull off at a time. It never pulls off in big chunks that she could possibly chew on, you know, or choke on, I should say. And when it does, if she finally, you know, gets it down to small enough that she could try to get the whole thing in her mouth at once, that's when you take it away from her and it's time for a new one. Uh, you never let them chew it all the way down to the end because then it potentially could become a choking hazard and you don't want that. But rawhide is definitely a choking hazard and it's also a chemical hazard. So please, 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 I know they're much cheaper. Believe me, I'm on a budget, um, a much tighter budget than I used to be uh, before my disability. And I understand that it's tempting to go for those, those cheaper dog treats. Please don't do that to your dog. Um, go for the all natural, like the bully sticks or the, the, you know, the, the pig ears, the goat hooves, etc. the stuff that you can read the ingredients. And like, all it says is like pork skin, say for a pig ear or on a bully stick, all it says is beef pizzelle, which is a nice way of saying beef penis. I don't know. Are they going to do bad things to me? Cause I said the word penis. I hope not. It, we're talking about the part of an animal that the snack is made out of. We're not talking about uh, anything of any sort of adult nature. Um, and I hate that we've made it, you know, a, a sin, so to speak, to use the appropriate anatomical words that people should not shy away from. Um, we dummy down ourselves and, you know, not that this video is made for children, it's not. Um, but it shouldn't be offensive. A child shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't rely on ridiculous nicknames, silly words for body parts because we're embarrassed to use the real word. That's just my apparent, uh, my parent opinion, uh, even though you didn't ask for it. Uh, yeah, I raised two boys and we didn't play around with silly words for, for body parts. There's no reason to. Um, and again, we're, we're talking about, uh, a cow, a, a, a bull specifically, is what these treats are made of. I've, um, anyway, back to her diet. So when I did my own research, once you realized that beef was something that does not bring on an inflammatory response, doesn't bring on the upset tummy, um, it was like, okay, ground beef. And I realized, okay, we've tried, you know, we've tried the, the rice with uh, lamb, we've tried it with chicken, we've tried it with beef, oh, still goes back to diarrhea within two weeks. Maybe the lamb's the problem. You know, it's like, let's look at the obvious sometimes. Uh, if you've changed the, the protein source multiple times, but you're still mixing it with, you know, with rice or some other grain, maybe the grain is the problem. So I switched her to a grain-free diet and she d does much better. At this point, she, I have started incorporating a dog food again. It's like, I, I don't even want to say too much about it because the last time I got my hopes up, we were like almost two weeks into a dog food, mixing it in with her food. And sure enough, I was told that can be about the time when they start having an inflammatory response to it. Um, and I, I like, I really thought we had found the dog food she could eat. And then after 
almost the full two week period, she, uh, she started getting diarrhea again. So we're, we're on a different one. And at this point she's still eating like 80% basically of her food is still the home mixed, which is uh, cooked ground beef, high fat, real Greek yogurt, which is low lactose. Um, I use Cabot brand, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's the high fat, low lactose, higher calorie, lots of calcium. Um, because you want to make sure you're getting enough calories into your growing puppy when you're doing a homemade diet. There's also pumpkin puree, like puree each, like for each 24 hours, I mix up. Now it was two and a half cups of ground beef and one cup of yogurt. Now that in each, she eats five times a day. That gets, it, this gets divided into five meals. A cup of pumpkin puree and a cup of applesauce. Um, I put nutritional yeast in it. Uh, otherwise known as Nooch. Uh, vegans are very familiar with it. Some other people aren't. It is a complete protein made from uh, yeast, as the name implies. It is not an active yeast, because everyone who's like, oh my god, active yeast, don't get it to a dog. Nutritional yeast has been cooked. It is dead. It is not growing. It is not bloating. It is not doing anything except providing a complete protein. Now, I'm not giving enough of it, really, for it to be a protein source. She's getting that from the meat and the yogurt. But it takes the flavor, and this is what a lot of vegans will know it from, they use it as a cheese alternative, like to make a cheese sauce or to sprinkle on pizza. Um, it comes like, you can buy it in flakes or granules. I, I like the flakes. Um, it takes, like when you're taking pumpkin puree and applesauce and stuff, it gives it a more savory flavor. And you can, like it goes from smelling like, oh, fruits and vegetables to, oh, somebody's cooking. Like, it makes that difference, and it makes her like it a lot better. So it was two and a half cups of beef, a cup, cook, that's the cooked, drained weight, um, a cup of yogurt, a cup of pumpkin, and a cup of applesauce, a tablespoon or so of nutritional yeast, and she takes a dog, the most simple, plain, dog multivitamin mineral that I could find with the least added weirdo ingredients. Um, and that's what she takes every, that's what she eats every day divided over five meals. So the last couple weeks we've been, we cut the beef and the yogurt in half and we're adding a quarter cup of the new dog food that we're trying in with each meal to replace it. Now the dog food, remember, it's not Measurement wise, it's not going to uh, transfer exactly the same, but the dog food is more nutrient uh, dense. You wouldn't eat as much of it. You do notice right away, I'm going to tell you, it, you know, some people are going to be like, TMI, Denise, but, um, you know, if you're dealing with a dog who's having diarrhea, when you put them, like when I put her on what she's eating, yogurt, beef, pumpkin, and applesauce, is a low residue diet. Almost everything in it is digestible. It leaves very little by the end of the time it's gone through her GI tract. So it, it leaves her pooping less frequently and smaller amounts. When you start adding commercial dog food, you start to see that they poop more, they poop bigger, but as long as it's not turning into diarrhea, then everything is going well. And that's where we're at at this point. So you can see she's growing well, which I've been concerned about. In fact, she's outgrown some puppies a little older than her who do not have the same problem. So I'm very happy. I know her nutritional needs are being met. And um, I'll keep you filled in. Thank you for watching. As always, please hit the like and subscribe. And that puts my videos in front of other people who might like to see them. Uh, have a great day.